There are seven big mistakes most administrators and executors make while going through probate. First of all, let's talk about what the difference is between an executor and an administrator. An executor is the person that was ass uh, ass assigned or asked by the person um, to take care of their affairs once they're no longer here. And the administrator is the person who has been appointed by the court, whether that is a family member, somebody else, another professional, or a professional fiduciary. And both of these, we actually refer to them as personal representatives. So the first mistake that people make is not having the right guidance and counsel to help you through the probate process. Um, a lot of times it might be a very simple trust that you can actually just go through and handle everything. And then other times you really need to have a professional estate planning attorney, somebody that specializes in knowing what to do when there's family rivalry or, you know, you have other people that are outside of the family that are, are wanting something from the trust, from that person that had passed on. So really, who is involved in the probate process? Well, let's start over here. Here is the probate clerk. And they just kind of handle the, the paperwork at the, uh, at the court. Then you have, this is the attorney. And they really only handle all the legal issues. And, you know, even as far as you know, the CPA will be involved with that too, but they really just handle the legal part of that. This is, these are the beneficiaries. These are all the people that, that want you to get this resolved as quickly as possible so that they can get their inheritance. And this big blue person, that's you. You have a big, huge responsibility and I'm sure that you could, you know, use some help. Mistake number two is not really knowing how probate works. When a loved one passes away, you're really asking, what do I do? What do I do first? Do I need an attorney? Do I not need an attorney? Um, what about the house? Should I sell it? Do we keep it? And what do I do with all of the personal belongings? Whether somebody's lived in the house for 10 years or 50 years, there's stuff because we, tend to accumulate. The bigger the house, the more stuff you have. So really you need to start by looking for a will and trust that's going to tell you, you know, if this person even had one. If you're an executor, hopefully your loved one had given you a copy of that. So that way you know who is, who the heirs are, who is going to inherit what and what percentage. Number three, selecting the wrong service providers to help liquidate the estate and prepare it for sale. So what you really want to do is, is really figure out who gets what, do we keep it? Do we sell it? Do, do the heirs want anything or are they entitled to it? So the biggest challenge is, you know, what to, in settling the estate is deciding whether to keep or liquidate the assets. And typically the house has the most value. So that's really where the most of the money is going to come from. Number four, thinking the probate process will only take a few weeks and relying on your attorney to handle everything. Believe me, they're not. They're really only handling all the legal aspects. You're the one that's responsible for making sure the lights are on and and, uh, you know, the landscape gets taken care of. Probate will take anywhere from nine to 18 months and sometimes longer. Um, it really kind of depends upon how, how difficult it is. Um, you know, some people, I mean, there are actually a couple, well, there's several celebrities, two of which Michael Jackson, he didn't have his affairs in order. And Thomas Kincaid, he was another one that, that uh, didn't have it all in order and had to go through probate. The other thing too is about probate. It can take 
it can cost five to seven, uh, well, to 10% of the entire estate. Number five, not securing the estate's personal property. Believe me, if you show up at the house, you will have people that have either been in the house or people that are going to come up to you and say, so-and-so promised me this, or I'm supposed to get this, or I need to go through and see what, what I want. And you really don't need to be doing that. You need to just take a deep breath, get the house rekeyed so that you're the only one with the key. And that way you can secure everything until you figure out from the will and trust who gets what and how much. Because, I mean, you don't want to just be handing out stuff to everybody. And then there's a big feud with the family and the beneficiaries and, and all that. It could get really, really messy. So be sure and do that. Get the, get the house rekeyed and don't let anybody in <laughs> until you get, get everything figured out. Number six, leaving the property uninsured and underinsured as you sell the estate. Now, you know, all kinds of things can happen, you know, whether it's natural disasters, vandalism, somebody could realize that the house has been vacant for, you know, three months, six months and kind of move in. And you really want to make sure that, you know, it's got, it's insured because if the house has been vacant for a while, the insurance company is going to say, I'm sorry, we're not going to cover it because, you know, the house is vacant. So you really want to make sure that, you know, that things are, are handled properly in this regard, especially if the house is the biggest asset that the estate has. Number seven, attempting to sell the state's real property, which is the house, without understanding the market. And it's not, it's not like an ordinary market or an ordinary sale. Um, a property in value, a property in probate has a lot of value and you have to figure out what it is at the time of the death and basically also when the property is sold. And many real estate agents are not certified and have really had a lot of training in, in dealing with these type of properties. And they could make the big mistake of, of you know, pri pricing the property and not really based on what current market values are. And, you know, you're just better off having somebody that has been specializing and, and working in this arena. Now, the other thing, too, that I wanted to talk about is there's things called iBuyers. They're tech companies, and you've, I'm sure you've probably heard about them. Um, Offer Bad, Open Door. Everybody's heard of Zillow. These are these are corporate tech companies that have got, got, come in in the past year and decided to start buying homes. And what they do is they say that we'll buy your house, we'll make it quick, fast, we'll give you cash, and you won't have to pay commissions. So what they don't tell you is they will come, they will make you an, an initial offer. Then they will send people in to take pictures and then they come back and say, you know, I'm really sorry, but we, we really can't pay you that, but we can pay you this. And then when it closes, you'll look at your closing statement and you'll go, what are all these fees? They charge you a whole bunch of fees on top of that, which is way more than what a typical real estate commission is. So, you know, they are, these people have a duty to their shareholders where if you work with a, a local real estate, a realtor, we have a fiduciary responsibility to do you to make sure that you get, you know, the most money out of, out of the home. And we get paid the lowest commission, you know, way less than any of these people. These people also affect the community. They're typically from San Francisco and Seattle. And when they take the money, it goes up there, where if you're working with a local real estate agent who lives in the community, we are supporting 
local businesses here, um, you know, the companies that we work with through the process. There are also other investors that will come in and, and they have what's called hard money lenders that they work with. And oftentimes they will come in and say, I'll pay you cash and so on and so forth. Recently, I know of a woman who was contacted by this particular investor who said, I will give you this much money and we'll close and you can go and move on. Well, his hard money lender said, I'm not going to give out any, any more money. I'm not loaning any more money right now. So he came back to her and said, well, gee, what I can do is I'll give you this much less and we'll be partners. And when I get the house fixed up while you're making the payment on the house and then we'll sell the house and we'll split the money. So it really wasn't the quick deal she thought she was going to get. So being personal representative is not easy. It's a lot of work and make sure you're working with the right professionals. We have a team of professionals. We have attorneys, we have accountants, estate sale service uh, services. We have locksmiths. We have, personal property appraisers and other professionals, you know, whether it's landscapers or whatever, we can help you get it done. So it's really nice to know that you've got support. We also provide additional information resources. Um, so this is one of the, one of our resources. This is uh, what your duties are and it's a lot. So we're kind of here to help, help walk you through it. And, you know, within a, with in a reasonable time frame. speaking of timeframes, here's the timeline. So this kind of tells you where you are, what it takes to get what you need to do. And so that you're not wasting a lot of time that you can get this done in a timely manner and get all the beneficiaries satisfied. So, like I said, it's a big job and we're here to walk you through it. So we have an ebook and it talks about the seven big mistakes that administrators and executors make. And this is my contact information. And there's the link the the uh, lose probate services. And that's where you can get the ebook for free. And I look forward to being a service to you. Thank you so much.